Why wouldn't you, if you have a young boy who wants to be a girl, maybe give him more testosterone so he could maybe feel like more of a man? Wouldn't that possibly make more sense? I'm not even saying it does. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't understand the full science of all of this. Ah, he doesn't understand the full science of that. Much like his failure to understand most things in life. That was Dave Rubin uh, suggesting that minors be forced, forced to take hormones to essentially prevent them from being transgender. That is what Dave Rubin suggested there in the video that you just watched. Notably, he is a member of the LGBTQ community. He is a gay man who is about to have two children through surrogates with his husband. And he was attacked viciously by his right wing audience for wanting to do so. And I think that you know chickens come home to roost and I felt pretty terrible that he was being treated that way because I still have a heart. But this is a guy who literally in that video you just watched thought maybe it's a good idea to force minors to take certain hormones that will possibly, according to him, help them identify with what their gender was at birth, what their sex was at birth, Ida. Well, you know, there is always this thing that sticks in my head from some of my friends who are part of the LGBTQ family is that there is also, you know, a, a hierarchy of uh, within that with where gay white men are at the top of that and they oppress, you know, other people and, you know, like trans people who are constantly being targeted. A couple of things that I want to say. First and foremost, um, he said he doesn't understand the science of it all, so then he should shut the hell up about the science totally. of it all. Why are you talking about the science of it all if you just said you don't understand the science of it all? Um, I I watched Bill Burr recently um, at a, a Netflix a show that he did for Netflix, and his evolution has been amazing. And he was talking about pe these people who are always saying that they talking as if they're doctors or scientists. And he really went in on them because he was like, you're, you're not a doctor and we should respect doctors. But, but what um, pains me to hear sometimes when we talk about trans children is when he said a girl that wants to be a boy or boy that wants to be a girl, not understanding what it is that is experience, what these people are experiencing. It is not just, you know, a desire, a, a, a a, just a, a something that you want to do for fun to have to experience the the social, you know, consequences for this. You not to be able to use the proper terminology to give these people the respect that they deserve in terms of what they go through and what they're feeling, regardless of how you feel about it. But you know. I, I I just think, look, trans people have been around, gay people have been around since the beginning of time. Black people have been around, brown people have been around. Y'all just used to oppressing them. And now that they're fighting back and finally giving themselves a voice and advocating for themselves and other people are rounding or are gathering around them to support them. You're having your, you know, your, your standoff because it's not like trans people just got here. You know what I mean? It's just this whole revolution of the trans experience and them saying, hey, I just want to live. I just want to get a job. Please don't beat me up. Don't kill me is it has become this Oh, they have a voice. They're they're controlling everybody. There, why don't these people attack the people that are really at the top? Why why don't you go for them? Because you know that they're, they're getting paid. They're getting paid from the people at the top. Let's yeah. keep it real. And right. uh, the previous puppets for the powerful right wingers in this country were at were making similar videos, by the way. Except back then they were advocating for electroshock therapy for gay people, like Dave Rubin. Essentially torturing members of the gay community to turn them straight. And this is a man who's out there doing the bidding of similar people today. And, and he, I mean, it's amazing to me, but because again, this is a guy who I think he fully acknowledges, he has to know. I mean, he's attacked by his own community on a regular basis because of who he is as a person. So he knows, he knows what the right wing represents. You have the log cabin Republicans being refused a booth at the Texas Republican convention. Their platform specifically calls out the gay community as second class citizens. 
But hey, you know what, the check clears, so Dave Rubin's cool with it. I mean, what is the point of life if you have nothing worth standing for, standing up for? Yeah, if you have no values, no principles, what's the point? You're just like this empty vessel, right? You're just this empty person and the money doesn't make you happy. I mean, look, I've never been rich, so I don't really know for sure. But I can tell you that if let's say something good happens financially for me, the amount of happiness I feel in response to that versus the amount of happiness I feel when I'm spending time with my friends, when I'm with people who love me, when I feel like I'm doing something because I have a purpose, that is incomparable to any financial success. You know, obviously everyone needs to be able to survive and take care of themselves and pay their bills. I totally get that and I'm not diminishing that, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about individuals who would much rather be a puppet for the worst elements of our country than to uphold values, have values and yeah. actually defend and fight for people who don't have any power. That's yeah. who Dave Rubin is, it's disgusting. And listen, I'm not rich, but if I could trade in everything that I have to get my uncle back, who was a gay man that was murdered in a hate crime, beat to death, I would give it all up. I would, I would, I would gladly go live under the freeway just to get my uncle back. I, um, you know, I understand now more than ever because I'm learning just like everybody else what the trans community is is talking about when they say that they are also oppressed by gay people, by queer, their fellow queer people, gay, but you know, men like this who belong to that that group, that unit, but will sell them up the road for a check and for position and power. It's just disgusting. And it's so sad to see because like everything else, it's always the people of color, the poor people that are always that always pay the grand price for all of this type of behavior. Absolutely. Well, related to that, we are now seeing this battle play out in Congress in regard to this lunch program, school lunch program that was expanded during the COVID pandemic. It has expired, it's about to expire actually. And so Congress is trying to, some members of Congress expand it until the end of September. But they're getting some backlash from Republicans. So first let's talk about the context here, okay? So this is a government funding program for school lunches. It's it's set to expire next week to be specific. Some senators are working to extend the program, but other senators like Rob Roger Marshall, who's a Republican from Kansas, says that it should expire because the the funding won't go to what he refers to as anti-LGBTQ schools. So the way that the legislation is written is to ensure that schools who discriminate against LGBT students in denying them school lunches should not qualify for the federal funds that they would otherwise get through this program. And so Republican senators, of course, have a problem with that. The waivers were left out of the budget, by the way, that President Biden signed in March. The bipartisan group of senators have revealed their legislation. These are the good guys who want to keep this program in place through September. Those senators include Debbie Stabenow, a Democrat. John Boozman, who's a Republican from Arkansas, Representative Bobby Scott, a Democrat from Virginia. And then you have Virginia Fox, who's a Republican from North Carolina. So it is bipartisan in that regard. But keeping the waivers would only cost $3 million. And But at the end of the day, the program ends up being budget neutral. Uh, look, we we spend so much money on the Defense Department that I'm not. I don't even want to get into the details about it being budget neutral. Like f off, okay? Uh, if we can spend literally hundreds of billions of dollars every year and increase the budget for the military every year, we can spend three. What is it? Three billion dollars on school lunches for kids. Now, um, Roger Marshall, who's a Republican from Kansas, said in an interview that he is contemplating objecting to the measure because of new guidance from the Agriculture Department banning LGBTQ discrimination in any program that receives federal nutrition money, which includes most school lunch programs. He says, quote, I'm just afraid that schools in Kansas won't have school lunches because of this administration's radical view on transgender issues. 
In other words, I'm concerned that the schools in my state discriminate against LGBTQ students. And since I'm concerned about that, I might vote against this legislation. Maybe, maybe consider the fact that it's not radical to want to protect kids regardless of what their identity is. Um, but he continues, and I'm afraid that they're going to raid the school lunch program over that issue. But uh, I want to be clear, um, a USDA official emphasized that the administration wouldn't pull funding from a school lunch program just because the state has restrictive laws around sports or bathroom access for transgender kids, nor because a school lacks an LGBTQ policy. Rather, individuals could only file complaints if they've been discriminated against by the specific school lunch program based on gender identity. For example, if they were denied food because they identify as transgender. What kind of monster would deny a child a meal because of their identity? Regardless of where you are politically, where you stand, what kind of human being must you be to deny a child a meal? And of course, again, the people who are below the poverty line, the mm -hmm. people who are struggling, the people in the marginalized communities are always paying the price for all of these idiots and their foolishness because they could care less about any of these issues. They just want to win and mm -hmm. you will be the pawn in the game and you will be the casualty for them wanting to win. Because these people, if you think these people don't have queer children at home, if you think these people are not raising people who are are having this identity difference you know real life issues deciding that they are who they are and and who they want to be and how they want to express themselves in this world which they should have the right to if you think that every single person in congress has straight children who are non transgender non non binary you are sadly mistaken that this is all about oppressing the people who don't have because every single issue when it comes to abortion it comes to medical care all of this stuff they just don't think you should have it because they have the best education, the best best healthcare and their children whether they're lgbtq non binary trans Whatever they are, are living their best lives, even mm -hmm. though they have to deal with these monsters at home. I mean, that what you just said extends to so many issues, including healthcare, by the way. All these lawmakers are like, no, we can't have Medicare for all. We like people having choices. You know, the private health insurance industry, it's great. You've got so many choices. While they're, of course, fully covered. By government health care that's offered to members of Congress. I mean, it's just, it's the way it works. Um, lots of resources, lots of great programs that benefit them. Uh, they get to take advantage of a two tier justice system where they can engage in insider trading all they want with no consequences, whereas we would go to prison immediately for that. It's just, it's incredible to see it. It plays out day in and day out. And when you have a country that has lost faith in its institutions, these are the issues we need to turn to. When, when you have people who take an oath of office to represent your best interests, and then they spend their entire political careers working against your best interests, that leads to the erosion in our political discourse, in politics in general that we're experiencing today. So I think that was a really good point. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.